best methods closely resemble certain scientific methods that are intended to establish causal connections and correlations. The methods of difference is virtually identical to the method of controlled experiment, wherein controlled experiment is used in biology, pharmacology, and psychology. A controlled experiment is one that involves two groups of subjects. Experimental group subjects receive a certain treatment. Control group subjects do not receive the treatment but are subjected to the same conditions as the experimental group. For example, two mice were used in a controlled experiment to determine whether a certain substance was carcinogenic. The two mice had identical genes with the same age were placed in identical cages in the same location, were subjected to the same environmental conditions, and were fed the same food over the same period of time. One mouse was injected with the suspected carcinogen, and the other was not. After two months, the injected mouse developed cancerous tumors, but the other mouse did not. Let occurrence 1 represent the injected mouse, and occurrence 2 represent the mouse that was not injected. If we let occurrence 1 represent the injected mouse and occurrence 2 the mouse that was not injected and let A through F represent the conditions common to the two mice which is genes H etc. and G represent the injection. In the table using the rule that a condition is not sufficient if it is present when the phenomenon is absent. Occurrence 2 eliminates A through F, leaving G, the suspected carcinogen, as the cause of the phenomenon. In expanded experiment, same experiment were performed on 100 mice. Let 50 injected mouse and 50 not injected mouse. For expanded experiments, scientists address problems regarding weak evidences by increasing the size of the experimental group and the control group. Thus, suppose the same experiment were performed on 100 mice, of which 50 were injected and 50 were not. Suppose that after 2 months, all 50 injected mice developed tumors and none of the control subjects did. Such a result would constitute much stronger evidence than the injected substances was carcinogenic. The normal probability distribution or bell-shaped curve resembles the method of concomitant variation. For example, 50 children with ADHD could be selected with 25 being placed at random in the experimental group and 25 in the control group. The children in the experimental group would be given the drug, probably in a classroom situation, and the children in control group would be given a sugar pill. One curve would represent the experimental group, another curve the control group. Assuming the drug is effective, the two curves would be displaced from one another, but they would probably overlap in part, as indicated in graph. This means that certain children in the experimental group exhibited more negative behaviors than certain children in the control group, but most of the children the experimental group exhibited fewer negative behaviors than most of the children in the control group. Another example, a nutritionist wanted to determine the effect of 15 vitamin and mineral supplements on atherosclerosis or artery disease because the effect was expected to require several years to develop. The nutritionist ran an ad in a health publication of poor individuals who had ingested these substances on a regular basis for 5 years. 80 people answered the ad and reported which substances they had taken and how much of each. These people were then examined. Some showed no evidence of the disease, while others manifested the disease in varying degrees. After analyzing the data, the nutritionist concluded that certain vitamins and minerals offer protection against atherosclerosis. The procedure illustrated in this example is not an experiment but a study. It is a retrospective study to be exact. Retrospective study that examines subjects 
who have already fulfilled the requirements of the examination. Prospective study subjects are expected to fulfill the requirements in the future. Another kind of study is called the correlational method, which closely replicates Mill's method of concomitant variation. For example, a psychology professor was interested in the relationship between IQ scores and grade point average. The professor randomly selected 100 graduating seniors, obtained their GPAs from the registrar, and asked them to take an IQ test. All of them complied. Then the professor compared the scores of each student with his or her GPA. The professor found that, in general, higher IQ scores corresponded with higher GPAs. The results of this study indicate a positive correlation between IQ score and GPA. If the study showed that students with higher IQs had, in general, lower GPAs, this would indicate a negative correlation. Correlation are not equal to causation or causal connection. Studies often fall short of establishing a causal connection between the two factors. This is because even if two events are correlated, it does not mean that one causes the other. But a positive correlation can at least suggest a causal connection. For example, a positive correlation between exposure to TV violence and aggression in children does not necessarily mean that exposure to TV violence causes aggression. It might be the case that children who tend to be violent are naturally attracted to violent TV shows, or perhaps a third factor is the cause of both. Once a correlation is established, a controlled experiment can often be designed that will identify a causal connection. In the case of TV violence, a group of children could be randomly divided into an experimental group and a control group. The experimental group could then be exposed to violent TV shows for a certain period, and the control group would be exposed to non-violent shows for the same period. Later, the behavior of the children in both groups could be discovered with every act of aggression noted. If the experimental group displayed more acts of violence than the control group, the conclusion might be drawn that TV violence causes aggression. Moving on. Experimental procedures resembling Mill's method of concomitant variation have also been used in the physical sciences to identify causal connections. In late 16th century, Galileo derived the law that the acceleration imparted to a body is directly proportional to the force acting on it. Galileo performed experiments involving spears rolling down inclined planes as the plane was incrementally lifted upward. The spear covered in greater distances in a unit of time, recognizing that the downward force on the spear is proportional to the pitch of the plane. In 17th century, Robert Boyle derived the law that the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. Boyle conducted experiments involving the pressure and volume of gases. Boyle constructed an apparatus that allowed him to compute the volume of a gas as he varied pressure. He noted that as the pressure increased, the volume decreased, and as the pressure decreased, the volume increased. In 18th century, Jacques Alexander Charles slow for gases. As the temperature increased, the volume increased and vice versa. Charles observed a correlation between the temperature of a gas and its volume. In early 19th century, Hans Christian Ørsted concluded that a current of electricity flowing through a wire causes a magnetic field to be produced around the wire. He noticed that a wire carrying a current of electricity could deflect a nearby compass needle. As the current was increased, the amount of deflection increased, and as the current was decreased, the amount of deflection decreased. Also, if the current were reversed, the deflection would be reversed. In early 20th century, Henrietta Swan Leavitt provided the first method available to astronomers for measuring the distance between our planet and galaxies other than our own. It's a correlation between the average brightness of a certain variable stars, called cephids, and the periods of variation. Cephids fluctuate in brightness over periods ranging from a day to several months, and Leavitt discovered the longer periods correspond with greater average brightness and shorter periods with lesser average brightness. Once the distance of a few nearby cephids was determined, 
the distance of any cepheid could then be computed from its average brightness in its period of variation. The summary of our report. Method of difference is virtually identical to the method of controlled experiment. Normal probability distribution or bell-shaped curves. It is resembles the method of concomitant variation. Third is the expanded experiment example is considered to be a case of multiple uses of Mill's method of difference. Fourth, correlation method closely replicates Mill's method of concomitant variation. So here is the difference of experiment and study. Experiment, there are two controlled experiments. One is controlled experiment under it experimental group and control group. And the second is expanded experiment. Under study, there are three. The first is retrospective study, second prospective study, third correlation method. So even if two events are correlated, it does not mean that one caused the other, but a positive correlation can at least suggest a causal connection. Here are the, exper here are the experimental procedures by the scientists. Late 16th century, Galileo derived the law that the acceleration imparted to a body is di directly proportional to the force acting on it. And 17th century, Robert Boyle, derived the law that the volume of a gas is inversely proportional to its pressure. And during 18th century, Jacques Alexander Charles, as the temperature increased, the low uh, the volume increased and vice versa. In early 19th century, Hans Christian Orst Hans concluded that a current of electricity flowing through a wire causes a magnetic field to be produced around the wire. And lastly, early 20th century, Henrietta provided the first method available to astronomers for measuring the distance between our planet and galaxies other than our own.